Keith, what do you hope might happen right now? I mean, I, I don't know what I hope. I, I hope there's uh, something cool. For the fourth and final gift, I'm going to change Keith's life. Yeah, I mean, I know that it's a gift from Zach, but I could be a lot of things. He is going to walk through that curtain and be surprised by a live studio audience, and he's going to be thrust into a spontaneous late night talk show. We got an amazing show for you tonight, and I can't wait to find out what that show is! Woo! He's got a band, he's got a teleprompter, we've got a celebrity guest coming? Brendan Hunt! Ah! Woo! Acid! What if this like actually changes his life? What if like someone sees it, and he's like, oh my god, this guy's so great. We should have another white guy host late night television. All Keith's life, he has dreamed of one thing, and one thing only, hosting his very own late night talk show. We're here on behalf of Cornfield Associates. We're gonna need you to put these on, please. So, I'm not gonna put this in writing. We are throwing Keith his very own late night show. Beautiful. I hope this concludes lunch. Where am I, what, am I doing anything? You're gonna follow okay. me. We have writers writing it. We're building a set. There will be guests. There will be funny surprises, musical performances, the whole nine yards. And he has no idea. It's a huge, huge, huge undertaking. And I would love nothing more than for so many Keith fans to be in the audience midday Monday. Yeah, what do you think is going on right now? Well, I know we're headed west. I'd be lying if I wasn't getting like a little car sick not being able to see. <laughs> but you know, I'm doing my best. Keith is here cool. in about one hour, okay? Copy that. So, let's get it together. <laughs> <laughs> What's something that I like? Maybe I'm playing in a in the LA Philharmonic. Ooh. And I didn't bring my French horn. He's gonna step through that curtain. Boom, the light hits. The teleprompter starts. We have a Chicago improv group, Octavarius, Mark and Brian, who are writing the script for the show. Kidnapping Keith. I'm kind of nauseous. We'll get you some food. Does that help with nausea? Um, I'm not sure McDonald's does. We are surprising Keith today with his very own late night talk show. He does not know that this is going to happen. Are we there? Yes, we're almost here. I'm gonna probably need you to roll up your window just so you can't really hear anything. Uh, <laughs> we're taking everything, everything that Keith loves and putting it into one package. Hi, Keith. Hi. How are you? Go to the right a little bit. I mean, a little nauseous, but otherwise pretty okay. Okay. I feel like I'm on drugs right now. But with the surprise, I need you guys to stay silent until the applause sign comes on, because Keith does not know that you guys will be here. Are we ready? I'm ready. I can't see, you know. Oh, because you have no glasses. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna wake up in a nondescript room. It's hot. Into this room? There will be a suit. Put on, put me on. I mean, that's my suit. <laughs> How'd you get my clothes? <laughs> Keith will put it on, unsure of where he is and what he's doing there. Okay. Do you do want to warm up at all? I don't know how I can warm up if I don't know what I'm doing. C-mark, C-mark, and D-mark. Okay, Keith, why don't you follow me? Okay. And why don't you take my hand, close your eyes. Oh, close my eyes again, okay. That's right, mother I'm gonna make your dreams come true, and you're gonna cry. Okay, we're backstage, guys, and why don't you come right here. Okay, you can open your eyes. Keith, what do you hope might happen right now? I mean, I, I don't know what I hope. I, I hope there's um, something cool. <laughs> I, I mean, I know that it's a gift from Zach but I could be a lot of things. This is going to be the high of Keith's life and everything else will be a disappointment. Hey, team, are you ready? Three, two, one. Tom, 
sunny Hollywood, California, it's Keith Tonight, featuring Lou Berger, and a special surprise guest that's even more surprising than this show. And now, here he is, it's Welcome to Keith Tonight. I'm Keith Aversberger. Woo! Obviously, most of you guys know me as the face on your hot sauce bottle, or perhaps bottles if you're real fans. Uh, or maybe I'm the guy who puts a big old spoon in his mouth on TikTok. I do all those things. Or maybe, you, you know, I'm the guy who loves Broadway but refuses to learn the words. It's, it turns out it's a better bit than knowing the words. It's true. Well, you probably don't know is I'm a member of the Try Guys, obviously. Uh, but a lot of Seth Rogans have been asking, what is a Try Guy <laughs> on Twitter? Which is strange, because I have talked to him on Instagram before. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Seth. Uh, the Try Guys are a group of friends who are you know, thrown into the most uncomfortable and embarrassing situations where Eugene somehow always thrives uh, anyway. <laughs> and apparently after two billion views, there's only one thing we haven't tried, and that is making each other happy. This whole thing is a gift from one of my best friends, Zach Kornfeld, and I'm reading all of this monologue off of a prompter and saying whatever my best friends, Brian and Mark, have written for me to say. <laughs> Brian is over there announcing, and to help me along the way, Brian, how are you? I'm doing great, Keith. Great job with the monologue so far. Thank you. I'm looking forward to see what you're gonna do next. Same. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've always dreamed of being a late night host. That is true. Uh, I'm not really sure why. I think it's partially because I grew up watching Conan O'Brien and I thought, wow, that guy is so wacky and goofy and fun. I wish I could be that wacky and goofy and fun and have a show where I do that. Uh, now, you know, the only goal I have left is to be Lady Gaga, but with longer legs. Check out these games. <laughs> I'm gonna hold on. You, you're playing the drums now? Alex is playing the drums now? Wow. <laughs> hey, it's Keith tonight. Anything could happen, baby. That's true. Uh, normally, this is where I'd tell you what an amazing show we have planned, but honestly, I'm completely unaware of what is to come. Much as I was unaware of this, I actually was uh, kidnapped, put into a car, and uh, given about an hour to become car sick on the way here, but I did not vomit <laughs> because I... Yeah, thank you. Mazels. Mazel tov. Uh, I actually didn't even know this show existed until right now, which is what most of America said about the Try Guys last September. <laughs> Hang on, hold on, Keith. You can't hide behind those sexy legs and these brilliant but self-deprecating monologue jokes. <laughs> you're a late night host now. That means you're like, like all of our best friend who's throwing the coolest party every night and we're all invited. But that's only gonna work if we feel like we know the, the real Keith. Right, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> you know, mo most late night shows are on every day. We had 28 years to get to know Conan. So yeah. uh, a little bit different. But we only have Keith tonight. Mm. Mm. That's right, that's right. So I think it's time we all learn a little bit more about Keith. Right, everybody? You want to learn more about Keith? Yeah! Let's know Keith! Let's know Keith! Guys, guys, Let's guys, 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 Keith. guys, hold on a second, hold Keith. on a second. Hey, Huey, yeah, that, that song is too much, hold on. We cannot just sit here and expect Keith to divulge his deepest, darkest secrets on his very own late night show for the very first time. That's, that's ridiculous. Thank you. <laughs> You're That's welcome. That's right. Also, I'm not sure what's left to know. Yeah. So thank you, Alex. That's uh, true, but it would be way more entertaining if we heard Keith sing his deepest, darkest secrets. Ooh. I think there that you go. So let's bring out the wheel. The wheel? The Get wheel up on the wheel. Yeah. Of secrets. Wow, look at that. 
at this. Pretty fun, huh? Look at this. Yep. this. We've gotten a lot of use out of this wheel. Let me oh, tell you. sure. But today it's a little different, Keith, and I'm really excited to share this wheel with you because, uh, as you can see, you're going to have to spin each sector of the wheel. Of now, this first sector of the wheel, that's all the secrets that you might have to tell. Okay. Sure. This is the genre of music that you're going to have to sing those secrets to. Of course, to. of course. And then, of course, we've got our favorite and third wheel right here, which is going to tell us who will be singing the song and when. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, so I do the middle one first. Yes, now the wheel spins forever, so maybe I just... Know. Okay, great. So let's... let's okay. That's let's not a good spin. No People want to see a good spin. That, no, Keith. Let's know Keith. Let's oh, super okay. embarrassing. So we need a super embarrassing secret. Okay. And what kind of song is it going to be? Let's find out. Let's know Keith. Let's know Keith. I'm going to give it a little. I'm going to help it a little bit. <laughs> okay, it's going to be the blues. And who's singing the song and when? <laughs> Keith, Keith. Tonight. Tonight. Oh, wow. Am I? Should I go over there? Come on I up. I feel like I should be over here, right? For the band. I worked up in Maine amongst the bramble and sticks. I was a camp counselor at a wealthy boys' camp. <laughs> there was a big old boy girl dance coming up, and they asked me to get the energy a little ramp. <laughs> so what I did is I actually got up during the uh, lunchtime hour, and you see that camp? It was called Camp Vega. Uh, and I always thought, oh, that's funny, they're like vegans. So I was like, how do I get to that joke by the end of this little speech? Uh, and we were an all boys camp, they were an all girls camp. And I said, eventually, I just said, well, I'm so excited for all of these girls from Camp Vega to come eat our meat. <laughs> even paid me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a true story. That's a true All story. Right. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys so much. Stick with us after the break. We've got an amazing show for you tonight, and I can't wait to find out what that show is! Two minutes. Two minutes. Break. Break. Can I get some water? Hilarious. What do you think? <laughs> this is hilarious. I'm Are you so excited? How much did this cost? Jonathan. Hey, this must Can I get cost a water? too much. There's yeah. no way this will make it back. Hey, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you. No, we won't. That's why we have to shoot a game show the next yeah, two days. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this the same stage? We need yeah. The envelope for his questions. Huey, shouldn't you be leading our cast and musical rehearsal right now? Uh, yeah, we moved it to 4.30 today. Cool. So we got to keep it quick here, people. Someone has a rehearsal to go to. <laughs> Uh, guys, thank you guys so much for taking your time away from the other responsibilities that we share to be here for this responsibility that it looks like we're sharing. You got it, Keith. <laughs> I mean, they definitely look handsome, don't oh. they? Looking very good. Alex Lewis, everybody. I'm lucky I'm in my wedding suit, so, you know, it sort of just comes with the territory because you have to look handsome on your wedding. And you did. Yeah, it's an expensive party. Yeah. Sort of like this one. Keith and I. I can't imagine how much this costs. Uh, truly, it, it's way too expensive. Look, for... Keith, you can't worry so much about how much things cost. You do when you own the things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, it's, uh, technically this is Zach's fault. <laughs> so... That's what we said. <laughs> All right. Well, it's great to chat, catch up with you guys. One more round of applause for Lou Berger. <laughs> hey, what do we got here? Look at this. We got an old, we got an old-fashioned microphone going on here. We got some, uh, some 
coffee or hot chocolate? What is this? Oh, that's hot sauce. This is, there, this is Keith's chicken sauce right here in this mug, everybody. Wow, we got a little Jay the Bird of the Eugene, got a mug of water. Lots of nice things on here. But, you know, before we bring out tonight's very special guest, I got to take a minute to check in with my co-host. And I'm just as confused as you are because I don't know the co-host. There is a co-host. Now the prompter is telling me to check underneath my chair. There's a bunch of things down there. Mystery co-host box. Oh, I have to go in like this. Let's find out. Is it an oversized, or oh, I'm sorry, this is an oversexed T-Rex. It's an oversexed T-Rex? Uh oh! That's right, please welcome the Oversex T Rex! Get on up here, yeah, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get a little groovy with you over here. Can I get over a little, little groovy? Yeah! Oh! 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 All right, get on up here, T Rex! Come on up, if you can. I know your knees aren't uh, like everyone else's as a, as a dinosaur. You can go ahead and head on over to that chair and. <laughs> Take a seat. <laughs> ah. we, it says you're oversexed. Uh, what, what sort of brings you to this oversexual nature? Is it uh, the type of food you eat? Perhaps oysters, the sexiest of slimy little booger foods? Oh, not, not oysters? How about maybe it's a dark chocolate? No, not dark chocolate. Maybe it's a little bit of red wine. Oh, maybe it is a little bit of red wine. It's a little bit of red wine, that's right. Maybe a little <laughs> Cabernet. Um, you know, I will say that, uh, well, I'm a little nervous to be around you. Um, Were there any other co-host options? <laughs> no, no, every single one says oversexed T-Rex. And, and there's a, a lot of oversexed T-Rex in here. This is all, it's, 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 it's all oversex T-Rex. There's, there's just what look like dozens of oversex T-Rex, which I've never heard the term oversexed, you know? Oversex to me doesn't imply horny. It actually implies the opposite. It's true. Satisfied. It's like, I'm just so done with sex. Yeah. That, that is the dictionary definition of oversexed, horny. Is horny. Yeah. Not, not oversexed. Yeah. Well, all right, the oversexed T-Rex, we need to get you out of here because we're about to welcome tonight's surprise celebrity guest. Give him one more round of applause for the oversexed T-Rex. Good to see you. Great to see you as always. That's right. It's crazy. We both get paid the same amount of money. That's true. I mean, we're a co-host. Uh, he's, he's not my junior or anything like that. We're totally equal in every way. Yeah. But it is time to welcome our celebrity guest. Everyone, please give a warm Keith tonight welcome to one of the creators and actors of the international smash hit Ted Lasso, Brendan Hunt! This is such a, a treat. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, those of you who don't know, that Brendan and I both went to the same uh, university, although we didn't go at the same time. But I've been able to meet him a few times as we are both distinguished alumni of Illinois State University, uh, which gives you all the credentials of being asked a little more aggressively to give them money every year. Uh, <laughs> otherwise, I'm not sure what other benefits you get, but maybe we'll find them someday. I finally did make them pay for me to come back, but only by reminding them that I've paid them enough money to do that. <laughs> See, I did, it, I did it totally the reverse. They, really? paid, they paid me to come once, and then now I can't stop paying them. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right, well, uh, let's hop into here. You know, um, I've got all these questions I'm going to find out and read as we go. Uh, but you are Brendan Hunt, famously known from Ted Lasso, but I've known you from doing so many other successful things before. You had a really long stint of doing lots of commercials. Uh, all the time, and it's wonderful to see you on Ted Lasso, and it's such a wonderful show, and I know uh, you worked hard to come up with the concept, what, what a decade ago? Uh, yeah, it was one of them commercials, in fact. We got asked to do commercials for NBC Sports when they had the English Premier League coverage, 
And they're like, oh, how about we make a dumb uh, football coach who becomes a soccer coach? <laughs> That'll be fun. And uh, now it's a proper TV show and they can't stop throwing tiny statues at us. Yeah. How, how did you get that first notion of just deciding to create something that you really wanted to make and not necessarily wait around for other people to, to tell you, yes, you can make it? I mean, the Ted Lasso thing, like we did get hired. Uh, so then we just got to tell them what we were gonna do and they were like, we don't know shit, sure, that sounds great. Um, which, was, which was handy, especially out here while you're waiting for things to happen, you gotta make your own shit or you'll go absolutely fucking crazy. Are you allowed to swear on this? Because I've done it twice in the last 10 seconds. I can't imagine this is actually being televised, so go fucking nuts. Right. <laughs> Anyhow, you know, you spent years performing at Boom Chicago in Amsterdam. And what was sort of the weirdest thing that ever did happen to you in Amsterdam? Because Amsterdam is known for, uh, honestly, the ability for a lot of very fun and weird things to happen. Uh, yeah, again, we get into what you can or cannot say on this show. Um, one time, I was hanging out with some people who I didn't know that well and just trusting that we were all people who had the same taste and a good time. Um, and uh, there may have been uh, LSD on offer, and I hadn't done LSD since college. So like, yeah, that sounds great, LSD, woo! And we went to this party in like an abandoned warehouse out in the fields, far from Amsterdam. I was lost, I didn't know where I was. Um, and uh, at some point, you know, having a good enough time, I was like, hey man, can I have another one of them acids? And I was like, sure, you go. all right, woo! Woo! Acid! Uh, long story short, it didn't go great. Um, the rest of the way, there were dogs? There um, were dogs there. There was like a pack of wild dogs was inside at this party. Um, and you're sure of that? Uh, yep, yep. Okay. Sure of that. Yeah, eventually my friend got me out of there. My friend, like guy I'd met earlier, uh, got me out of there and we were walking through fields and he found a phone booth and shoved me in that phone booth and eventually a car came and I was uh, spirited home. And uh, it was real close though, Keith. It was real close. <laughs> it sounds like a pretty good movie, <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Well, you guys stay tuned until after the commercial break to see Brendan and I do something together. We'll both find out after this. <laughs> this is a creation I made. It's really great. <laughs> yeah, really great. It's a giant bird dressed as a man, obviously. Oh, I right, see. Right. I see. He has a little coat and like a little suitcase and, and oh, shoes. Oh, that? Welcome back! Welcome back! You know, it has always been a dream of mine to produce this sort of thing. It's pretty great, right? It's pretty great. It's been a dream of mine always to produce a live stage version, actually, of The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers. It's actually, this is a very true thing. And tonight, it's all about making dreams come true, so I'm about to give you all a little preview with the help of my co-host, the oversized T-Rex, not really, Brennan Hunt! <laughs> Brendan Hunt, you and I are going to make a full stage musical of The Two Towers. Now, how familiar are you with Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers? Uh, might have, might have seen it? Probably saw it. Probably saw it. Probably saw it. Yeah, probably saw That's it. That's the one with the trees? That's the one with the big old trees. Great. Helm's Deep, Gandalf the White, uh, Saruman. A lot of good stuff happens in that one. <laughs> sure, sure. sure. Yeah, they, 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 they're taking the hobbits to Isengard. Yeah, and it's like, and then Gimli's trying to run. Oh, <laughs> He's yeah. smaller. Oh, Gimli. He's smaller. All right, well, uh, the only thing we're really missing for this is scripts. Oh, wait, here we go. Here we got the scripts now. Wait, so, so you need props. Oh, I need props. Yep. Got to get you props. Sorry, I didn't even see the props. We need some props. We need some scripts. All right, we got some props here. Uh, we got parts here. We've got Gandalf and King Theoden. Oh, this is great. Oh, I, ah. Uh. Who got do you, you want to be? Buddy. Do you want to be Gandalf? You're Gandalf. You're Gandalf. Okay, Come you on. get to be King Theoden. Now, King Theoden, just so you know, he's been, uh, he's got basically Saruman in his ear. Uh -huh. So he's like very, very sickly old and ill. Is he, take, is he taking a nap under a blanket? He, he kind of is like, he's basically, he should be a nice like 55, oh, here we go. but he appears like 92 and like super decrepit and he's like cast out his son. Everyone's upset. He's got this guy, like, creepy guy whispering in his ear all the time. Mm -hmm. So I'll be Gandalf. Okay. Gandalf comes in and, you wouldn't take an old man's walking stick, would you? <laughs> That's what he says. Mm -hmm. Let me hold on, let me get this on my face. And because they let, they let him keep his walking stick because 
he needs it because he's an old man. Okay, you guys just busy yourselves while we get ready over here. You guys just all, all look to your neighbor right now and, and talk about your favorite moment. Is it when Frodo falls face first in that tide pool of death? Is it when Go Gollum and uh, finally and Smeagol have their little back and forth mirror scene? It's very cute and beautiful. Is it um, when, <laughs> is it simply, um, then we will ride to Rohan. Is it, uh, I mean, this beard's really giving me a little group. You look great. Okay, great. All right. Well, I, need, I don't have a wizard staff. What if you just hold both of these yeah. at once? Yeah, take one of my sticks. There you go. <laughs> great. Yeah, that works. This is important. This is a big part of the scene. <clears throat> all right. Brian? Are you guys all set? We're great. I, all right. I, I don't remember who played Theodore or what he was like, so I'm just going to go what I think is right. Yeah. All right, head. here we go. <laughs> Interior. Rohan's throne room. King Theoden sits on his throne, and Gandalf approaches. Theoden, son of Thangol, too long have you sat in the shadows. Hearken to me. Gandalf holds up his hand. I release you from this spell. Oh, but the king laughs in his face. <laughs> you have no power here, Gandalf the Grey. Gandalf drops his gray robe to reveal a white one underneath. <sighs> I will draw you, Saruman, as poison is drawn from a wound. Saruman speaks through the possessed body of King Theoden. If I go, Theoden dies. You did not kill me. You will not kill him. Rohan is mine. Be gone. Gandalf whips his staff and King Theoden goes flying out of his throne. Theoden rises, possessed by Saruman, and we have a wizard fight! Two old men swinging each other around with magic and never quite touching physically. Whoa! Okay, now there's this big bit where you, you need to like determined. spin me by my foot. <laughs> oh. No, you can't touch my foot. Theoden gives a rageful glare. Gandalf gives a more determined look to camera, and magic pushes Theoden to the ground, banishing the spirit of Saruman from Theoden's body. A moment later, Theoden wakes up. I know your face! Gandalf! Gandalf approaches the king. It's me. Gandalf puts a tender hand on King Theoden's cheek. Dark have been my dreams of late. <laughs> what kind of dark? Come back to my chambers and I'll show you. <laughs> Gandalf looks down at their pants. <laughs> well, what about they kiss? What about they kiss, Brian? Oh, I, I, I was yes. moving on past it, but if you really want to, I mean. What? <laughs> it says they kiss. <laughs> Gandalf looks down at their pants. Well, now I know why they call it the Two Towers. Why? And see! Oh my god. <laughs> Lou Berger, everybody, providing an incredible story. And of course, the incomparable Brendan Hunt, you can go catch him on Ted Lasso, and if you live in LA, you might be lucky enough to sometimes see him do a one-man show or some other amazing performance. He does so many wonderful things. So great to have you on the show. Good to see you too. Yeah. Bye. 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 All right, we'll be right back with our musical guest, Lou Berger. Don't go anywhere! That's not how that scene goes. Do I? I know. That's not how that scene I goes. I know, they changed it up. That scene doesn't go like they that. changed it up. Yeah. It's how close, you doing? Good, that close. scene doesn't go like that. That's how it goes Keith, in my Do you have my other drumstick? The kiss? Maybe that's in the ex double extended version. It's in the <laughs> double ex boners. Yeah, the two boners. Lord of the Rings, the two boners. The eye of Sauron is a really gross joke in that reference. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. God. What? Uh, wow. <laughs> I didn't say it during the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I got to say, my dream talk show wouldn't be complete without a chance for me to close out the night by performing with my other best friends and bandmates, Alex Lewis and Huey Stonefish. Ladies and gentlemen, Lou Berger. <laughs> All right, I don't know what we're going to sing or play, uh, but I guess it's time to hit it, boys. Well, it's time. Today's Monday, but tomorrow's Tuesday. Ah. Everyone's favorite holiday. So we're singing Tiny Little Tickle in My Anus, eh? <laughs> we can't. No, no, no. I think I know what song we're singing. <laughs> Sounds like we're going to get a lot of ingredients and put them in a little bowls scattered around the table. I think you've got the right idea, Keith. And everyone's going to sit down. We're gonna have ourselves a white people taco night. We're getting taco shells from the grocery store and ground beef from the grocery store and shredded cheese from the grocery store and Ortega sauce from the grocery store. And I can't wait to sit at my table wow. and sprinkle everything on in to my shells wow. and eat each taco as fast as I can so, so I can have another taco or two or three or four it's a white people taco night white people taco night it's not limited to only white people but white people love it the most and we like Cheese. We like and we cheese. like tomatoes and sour cream. Sour and we cream. like to pretend we work at Taco Bell, but nobody wants to work at Taco Bell. We've got our thanks to give to the grocery store and mom and dad for going to the store and to ourselves for helping unload the car and to tacos themselves. Hey, we love you, tacos. White people taco night. Yes! It's not limited to only white people, but white people love it the most. One more time! Everybody. White people talk. Sing along, you know the words. White people talk all night. It's not limited to only white people, but white people love it the most. White people talk. Oh, we're gonna keep going? Yeah, we're gonna keep going, yeah! White people talk all night. It's not limited to only white people, but white people love it the most. And many white people think white people invented tacos. Cha cha cha. You're here! Jared Bumpkin, everybody! Oh, and we got, we got Zach and Zach. This is quite the special surprise. Uh, it's a truly a dream come true. <laughs> Hopefully, uh, this is just, you know, a foreshadowing of some later time in my life where this will be a reality. Uh, but this fictional reality right now sure means a lot to me. Thanks so much for all of you for taking your time out of your day. Thanks to all of you for working so hard. Thanks to Rachel, who I know probably did the most work here today. Give it up for Rachel. <laughs> to Zach Kornfeld, who got me a pretty good gift, I have to say. Thank you guys so much. Have a good night. Bye! <laughs> Looking good. I was wondering why. I was like, why is that? It's Keith tonight. It's Keith, Keith, Keith tonight. Keith, Keith, Keith. Enjoy throwing the tortillas. Uh, surprise, motherfucker. You're never gonna top this. You're gonna cry. You're gonna have the time of your life. Oh, you're not even gonna be able to even pretend like this wasn't the best shit of all time. I win.